Hello. I'm, I'm John Davis. I'm a developer for Union Pacific. And uh, I just want to share today all the things that um, playing board games, um, because I'm an avid board gamer, how board games have made me a better developer. Um, so, like a lot of us, I grew up playing board games. Uh, most of them I consider bad board games now because I know better. But you know, they include, you know, the, the normals, uh, Monopoly, Sorry, Uno. I never played Life. Uh, all I know about Life is that you should go to college, and that's like the only decision in the whole game. But um, so. While searching for images on the web of these bad board games, I came up with these amazing board flips. Like when you play Monopoly, you know the best way to end a game is for one of the players that's not winning is to just flip the board. The game's over now. We're not we're not going to play anymore. So here's one that I thought was interesting. Um, it isn't exactly a board flip because the board is still on the table, but I, I thought it was you know epic epic enough to include in the whole board flip montage we got here. So this one I think is interesting. Um, we have this guy here, he's, he's done with the game, he's flipping the board. And what I think is, that, well there's a couple things interesting about this one is that uh, we have uh, his, his, gaming, uh, his gaming partner it looks a little worried about the whole situation, like this really shouldn't be happening. And, uh, it looks like, if you look really closely, it looks like it's a board flipping tournament, which I think is, I think is an interesting way to, to spend an afternoon, is just like entering a tournament where you flip boards the best you can do. Uh, um, here's another one that looks, looks pretty epic. I, I like the way that the, the board is actually you know, in the air and it's being flipped. Uh, I, I think it might be a little staged, because I don't know if that Monopoly board is actually where we think it is, it might be photoshopped. So I'm not totally sure. Um, anyway, so those are those are some board games I grew up with. Um, so I'm software developer, board gamer. Those are my two two big things in life. Um, so I figured, you know, there's got to be ways that these uh, these ideas come together. Um, so uh, has anybody played Bananagrams? There's a game called Bananagrams. Basically, you have a bunch of Scrabble tiles, and you mix them up upside down. Then each player takes several of them. I forget how many is seven, maybe. And then you're basically building uh, this the crossword puzzle type thing, and you're trying to use all the letters. And when all the letters are gone, you know that's when the game ends. And whoever finishes their their group of uh, their crossword puzzle out first is the winner of the game. Well. The one thing about this game is if you don't read the rules well, if you just kind of glance over the rules and start playing, which is what a lot of people end up doing, I am guilty of it myself, but you try to build this crossword puzzle out of all these letters that you're given, and sometimes you'll get to a point where I, I can't even, I can't work with this. Like, you might have this, you know, on the screen and then, you know, you, you'll get an extra letter and you're like, this G goes nowhere. I, I don't know what I can do with it. So you're kind of stuck, and you're just kind of sitting there. Well, if you read the rules, uh, you can refactor. You can scramble your crossword around. You're not beholden to the words that you've built. Uh, you can really refactor and mix things around. So it allows you to add that new letter, to add that G. And um, that kind of makes me think about software development, uh, the way that sometimes you'll be asked to add a feature, um, by one of your customers or one of your users, and you'll have no way of doing it. You'll be like, uh, you can't get there from here. And uh, it kind of, even though it's a little silly, it makes me think of Bananagrams, how you can scramble those letters, you can make the code a little different, you know, refactor, and just kind of add your feature and um, kind of put it in there. Um, another game, oops. Uh, another game I really like is Agricola. Um, has anybody played Agricola? Uh, a, few, a few of us have. Um, Agricola is a game, it sounds really boring, but it's a game where you try to build the best farm. 
and that may sound a little bit drab, but the idea is that it's a what what's called a worker placement game where you have these family members that can do work for you during the game and they can gather things, they can you know, um, build different parts of your farm. And uh, the thing in this game is there's, there's a lot of options to do. There's, uh, as you can see from this picture, there's a lot going on. Uh, you can see the farm being built. Actually, there's you know, four different farms in each corner of the screen. But, uh, there's so many options to do, and um, you really can get lost in all of the different things you can do during the game. Uh, the one thing about this game is that I circled it in red in the center of the screen. Um, you can kind of see it a little bit. Is that there's all sorts of interesting things you can do during the game to make your farm better, but part of what I feel when I play this game is that this action in the center, uh, you might be able to read it, it says one read, and read is just a resource in the game. And what, what I feel like when I play the game is that is the most boring action uh, during the game because it's like, read, what is that? I don't even know. Well, what it does is it helps you build, it helps you build a bigger house. It helps you upgrade your house from, you know, maybe it's wood to clay to stone. Anyway. The point is, is that read, you know, is in the game only to increase, you know, the size of your house. But the fact is, is that you're very likely not going to win this game unless you take this very, very boring move. It's like you, you put your family member on that space and you almost go to sleep while you do it. Like, you know, you want to get clay because you're going to build a clay oven and that makes sense to you. You're, you're going to get stone because you're going to, you know, uh, build rooms on your stone house or something like that. And those all make sense, but the read is just so boring and nobody ever wants to take it, but they know they have to because they're not going to win the game if they don't. So that's kind of about you know, taking that time to invest in yourself and invest in your project and do the things you might not want to do because they're not as readily you know, uh, beneficial to you, but just knowing that, okay, even though I don't want to do this, I have to understand that you know, it really has to be done. And sometimes that takes the shape of maybe uh, explaining to your project manager or your manager, however your uh, whole team is set up, that there's things that we need to do. Uh, they're not beneficial right away, but they will pay dividends in the future. Um, and that kind of uh, has that parallel for me, at least. Um, I, I would talk about Pandemic, but um, that's a cooperative game where you kind of have to work together. Uh, but um, has anybody played The Mind? Uh, yeah, not, not quite as many. We're kind of going down in the numbers of, of who's all played these games. But um, The Mind is a game where it's simply, you're, there's 100 cards in the game, one through 100. They're all just simply numbered. Um, and at the beginning of the game, each player is dealt. Um, you know, it's round one starts with every player's dealt one card. Round two is everybody's dealt two cards, and so on and so forth, and until you get to round, depends on the number of players, but uh, until you get to round uh, 12, you dealt 12 cards. Um, and the, the rub with the mind is you're trying to play all of the cards. You're trying to um, get rid of cards in your hand in a sequential order. So if you're dealt, like in this case, four cards, you might look at those cards and think, oh, well, uh, all right, these cards are kind of high. Uh, there's no, nothing really, I mean, they're kind of close to 50, but nothing really that far below 50. So uh, everybody's supposed to work together in playing out all these cards in sequential order, but you cannot talk. You cannot give signals. All you can do is kind of look each other in the eyes and decide, you know, who's who's ready to uh, play their card, who's um, you know who's got the lowest card, who's the one that should be playing, and uh, that really makes me think about you know learning about my teammates and figuring out what makes them tick, you know, just trying to figure them out on a deeper level rather than just like what they do on the project, and uh, it just kind of, 
uh, helps me build that understanding a little bit more than just simply, you know, they're, they're a resource on the team and they do things and I do too and we work together. I think it's a little bit more than that. Um, instead of just, you know, looking at all us as resources. Um, another game, has anybody played Spyfall? Okay. Um, yeah, Spyfall is a game where uh, inside the box there is like, you know, 25 of these small decks of cards. And what the uh, small decks of cards look like is that there'll be a location. It'll be in the top, top left corner. It'll say, you're at the school, and then um, optionally you can use at the bottom, bottom left, is uh, everybody has an occupation. That you might be, in this case, there might be a janitor, a teacher, a principal, student, things like that, uh, people that would find themselves at the school. And what happens is, and there's also a, a card that just simply says spy, like you see on the left there. And what happens is, is depending on number of players you deal out, if there's six players, you deal out six cards, making sure that one of those cards is the spy. And um, when everybody looks at their card, they either see that they're simply at the school, or they see that they're at the spy, and they have no idea what's going on. They have no idea where they're at, or what they should be, or anything like that. And the way the game works is that one of the players starts, just randomly decided which player starts, and they ask another player a question. And it has to do with you know, the location that they're at. They might be like, well, what time did you get to work today? Or How, what do you like about your job? Or just things, you're trying to get information about um, basically where you're at. And uh, the people that know where they're at, the people that were dealt the school card, are trying to determine which, which player is the player that doesn't know what's going on. Which player is the spy? And the spy, the spy is trying to determine where they're at. Because the spy card doesn't say anything about the location on it. So that's kind of the rub is that, you know, everybody has their own uh, thing they're trying to do based on if they're the spy or the student or janitor, or, you know, somewhere at the school. Uh, what this teaches me is to, uh, to really ask better questions because um, sometimes when you ask the wrong question, you'll, you'll get an answer, but it won't be beneficial or useful to you because you could easily say, like, uh, you could word your questions in a way that you could say, do you like your job? And then the person you're asking would just simply say yes and then move on. Well, did that let you know if they're the spy? Did that let you know if you're the spy where you're at? Did it really give you any information? Not really, because they're not really forced to expound on that any. You know, it just kind of teaches me to, if you ask the right questions, if you uh, go the right direction, uh, you can get better information. Because sometimes people aren't always so open to share. They're not necessarily going to expound on, on this yes, no thing. Um, so uh, that's at least ways that I've um, <coughs> learned more about developing through board games. Uh, are there any questions? Does anybody else have any experiences that they've kind of like parallels that they've seen between board gaming and uh, software development? Well, I get. That one's called the mind, where it's just simply a, a deck of one, one through one, one hundred is, you know, are on the cards, and you have to play them in sequential order, and you can't really say anything. You just kind of have to understand what. I actually have it with me, but. Yeah, because there's a lot of nonverbal communication that goes on, and you really have to read that when you really have to read that when you play this because you can't 
just go by words or go by what you read in an email. Sometimes you have to, you know, get. Yeah. So it's definitely useful that way. Are there any questions? All right. Well, thanks for listening to my talk.